This program, IntCoreTimer.c, demonstrates the seven steps towards setting up and using an interrupt. And the only function of this program is to toggle an LED on the NU32 every second using the core timer. So the first thing we do is we set up the number of ticks the core timer has to count before toggling the light. That's 40 million because we know our CPU is running at 80 megahertz and we know the core timer counts one tick every two CPU cycles. Uh, then we, step one is to define the interrupt service routine. We're going to call our interrupt service routine core timer ISR. We could call it whatever we wanted. Um, it's of type void because it doesn't return anything. And we need to define these two parameters to uh, the ISR. The first one is core timer vector. That tells us the, um, the vector number for the interrupt. And if we looked in that P32MX giant 40,000 line file, we'd find that core timer vector is just defined to have the value zero. So we could have just typed zero there. And we're also going to define it to use interrupt priority level six, and it's going to use the shadow register set, not context save and restore. Uh, another option here would have been to use any of the other um, one through seven priority levels and to use the software um, save and context save. And so we would have used IPL N soft, where N is some value one through seven. That would use the software context save and restore. Okay, so once we enter the interrupt service routine, uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clear the interrupt flag. We have to make sure that we do that somewhere in the interrupt service routine. Uh, we're going to invert the LED so it, it toggles. And then we need to set the counter for the core timer back to zero. And the core timer also requires, so that it will interrupt again, it also requires us to set the value of CP0 compare. That's what we're going to compare against to generate the interrupt. So we set that to 40 million. OK, so that's the interrupt service routine. Now we've got the main function down here. And these are the remaining six steps. Step two is to disable the interrupts at the CPU. So now if inter any interrupts happen while we're setting up the interrupt, they'll just be ignored by the CPU. Uh, the next step after that is to configure the device that will be generating interrupts. And for us, it's the core timer. And the only configuration we need now is to set uh, the value at which the interrupt will be generated. So once the core timer counts up to core ticks, which is 40 million, that will generate the interrupt. So that's our configuring of the device that generates the interrupt. Uh, step four is to set the priority of the interrupt. And the priority here, priority level six, has to match the priority level in the interrupt service routine, or else it won't function. So here we set uh, the interrupt priority to be six. The interrupt sub-priority we set to zero. We didn't really need that, but we included it for um, completeness. We, if we didn't define the, the interrupt sub-priority, it, it would default to zero. Uh, the next thing we do is we're going to make sure that the interrupt flag is set to zero. So again, that there are no interrupts that will uh, occur right away as soon as we finish configuring. So we set the interrupt flag to zero. And then finally, we set interrupt enable to one. So now that's the special function register that says, all right, this device is going to be generating interrupt. So pay attention to them. And so that's step six. The last step is step seven. We're going to tell the CPU to start paying attention to interrupts again. And so now, whenever the core timer reaches 40 million, because that interrupt is enabled, it will generate an interrupt, and then we'll jump up to this interrupt service routine. The rest of the program. It's just an infinite loop here um, doing nothing. And so the only thing that happens is we just sit in this infinite loop doing nothing until an interrupt is generated by the core timer. We run to the uh, interrupt service routine, invert the LED, exit, and then continue with this infinite loop.